Hi everybody, it's Jonathan Reeves here with another Twin Motion 2022 video. And I've got some great news. The channel's been going really well lately. We've had a big growth and I'm on track for 10,500 subscribers by the end of this month. So if you haven't signed up already, please do join the channel. I've got a ton of videos planned in the next few months and this year for sure. It'd be great to see you joining up on the community and looking forward to having you on board. Anyway, today some really, really exciting news. We're going to be looking at the amazing new Quixel plants that they've added to Twinmotion. And this means that Twinmotion really truly is uh, the number one product for 3D visualization, I would say, for landscape and garden design. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you today with the new lovely assets. Enjoy the video and thanks for watching. Hi everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Twinmotion 2022.1 tutorial and today we're going to be looking at the new Quixel assets and plants that you can use in your projects to make them look really amazing and sort of really enhance your projects for landscape and garden design. Now you can see at the moment I'm running on a project that was an eco home I designed a little while back and I've done a few other tutorials for before so I'm just using this as a kind of little background. We've got some nice images that I want to show you how to create. So we'll talk about the creating plans and sections elevations as well. But the main feature that I really want to highlight today is if you go to the new Quixel assets, I want to talk about the new 3D plants that Quixel have now introduced natively into Twinmotion. So one of the problems with Twinmotion before was that you used to go into the vegetation and while you had a decent library of things like trees and things, uh, maybe quite a nice few libraries of things like bushes. There was never quite the right plant you were looking for and you didn't always have exactly what you needed. So Twinmotion are trying to work on this by allowing you to now basically import much more from the Quixel library. And let's take a look at these in more detail. So I'm going to go to my garden plants and you can see there's different folders with the Quixel icon here indicating the types of plants that you're going to find. Now, the very first thing you're going to need to do if you've already not downloaded it is basically to click and you'll see a little icon in the window here. Now, this clearly is one that I've actually downloaded already, so that's fine. And basically what I can do is if I want to, I can drag in the entire, shall we say, catalog of those plants. So let's drag the entire catalog in and just let that process and then I'll just click F to fit to it. I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll put it onto the patio just for now, just so you can kind of see it in a bit more detail. So you'll notice that the plants are very, very um, high quality assets. They're really, really nice looking. Put a bit of depth of field on at the moment, so you can see that depth of field kicking in when I go a bit closer to them. But they look really, really great. Now, if you do click onto the plant here, you'll notice that you can also get what they call variations. Okay, so the variations are something that where you can actually select the individual plant and now basically just sort of place away quite rapidly and place a few of those in your project. So I really like this new feature for the variations. Now one other really nice thing with the Quixel assets is all you need to do is click onto uh, the selection mode and yet again we can scale them. Okay, so that's really cool. And we can also tint them as well. Now I wasn't expecting this and this is a very nice little extra bonus. So if you want to make it a little bit greener or whatever, you can do that now and just sort of enhance those colours. So that's very, very cool. So let's take a look at a few of the other assets here. You can see this one here doesn't have the variations just yet. So all you do, if you want to generate it, you click generate variations, let it process for a second and then those variations will pop up in this window here. So now we can kind of click on those leaves, for example, and that's nice. Let's drag in some extra leaves. There we go, just drop those on that patio. Let's drag in a particular plant here. There it is, and so on. Now you can see the other nice thing with the Quixel plants is they do actually move. They do respond to the wind and the weather and so on as well. Um, so very, very nice. What I'm going to do here is just quit back into media mode so that you can turn off, uh, turn off the blur and you can see how those plants are working rather nicely. Now, in my project here, there's quite a lot going on. Okay, I've got a bit of a kind of party going on. So what I'll do just for now while I'm working is basically just turn those people off. And those are all managed in my groups here that I can basically just turn off and hide. And what we'll also do is we'll just get up to more of a kind of daytime 
view of our project as well, which looks nice. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these other plants in here. Let's go back to garden plants. Let's look at the flowering plants and let's look at a few more examples. So again, you can see if I want to, I drag in the entire icon or if I prefer, I can just go on to the variation and just add that locally in. And you can see it's very quick, very rapid. And these are really, really nice detail. If I kind of zoom into them um, a bit more closely, let's click F to fit to them. And you can see what kind of quality we're dealing with here. So I really, really love the Quixel assets. I think they're just amazing quality. And to have these responding to the weather and the wind in Twin Motion now is absolutely fantastic. Good. Okay. So you're going to want to click on these objects and begin to explore these libraries. And another nice aspect is you can click on two favorites. So when you're in a particular library, you can do the favorites, or if you prefer, just go back to Quixel itself, okay, and click onto the heart. That will give you all the favorites that you're basically working with in the Quixel libraries. So again, this is a really neat way to manage your libraries and basically favorite certain items as you're working. Um, so let's drag in an acacia. There it is. Let's drag in a variation, so a different variation. And it looks like there's a few more in there as well. So what a great feature. This is a very, very quick and nice way for you to rapidly expand your plant libraries in Twinmotion 2022. Now, the really other nice thing about these is, is of course they'll work with the path tracing. Um, so if you click the path tracing icon on, you'll see the true quality of those renderings once that kind of kicks in as well. Okay, so let's just explore a few more of the other libraries. Um, you can see at the moment I'm just in climbers and there's a few here that I haven't yet downloaded. So I just want to show you this process here. So you'll notice a tiny little icon in the corner. All you need to do is click that and the progress bar or circle rather will pop up and you can see very faintly it's sort of downloading. So while that's um, running, let's just download these other ones here as well. Now you'll notice that once it is downloaded, then as I say, you can quickly create the variations. Um, what it will do is just process the data again, connect to the cloud just to import those individual variations. Those are others still downloading, but there we go. So now I can click onto my battery and let's just pop uh, a bit of this sort of ground cover on the project as well. So we'll have a nice little kind of lush area of planting over here. Let's get a few different types. And of course, there's nothing to stop you selecting two or three. And then as you know with Twinmotion, every time you click, you're going to get a different variation selected randomly from those three with a different size as well. So this is really nice. You're basically placing individual plants and you can see them all here. Again, of course, you can select them here and we can change multiple items at the same time if we want to. So that's very cool. Um, I also like the fact that you can just sort of select each individual one and uh, colour picker always pops up in the wrong place in my view. <laughs> I'd, I would move that to a different location, um, but you see it always pops up in the middle of the screen. I would like Twinmotion to dock this somewhere down on the dock in the future. Good, okay, but um, you can see how you can basically take that plant and introduce a few different sort of variations of it into the model. Okay, so another really, really cool feature is, of course, these plants look absolutely amazing when you click to the path tracer as well. I'm just in low settings at the moment, but I just want to give you a bit of an idea of how they're going to look when they're fully rendered. Um, so yeah, very, very nice. And you can have them respond to the wind or not as well. So do take a look at the new Quixel assets. You're going to find a really, really good selection of libraries um, with lots of different varieties and all sorts of interesting things like ground cover, uh, let's have a look at some ferns, for example. Let's just download a couple of ferns. One of my favourite plants, so let's download those. So I think, you know, what we're going to find with Twinmotion is um, the criticisms that landscape designers and garden designers had perhaps before in terms of the lack of plants is not really as much an issue now. And Twinmotion have said that every month they will be releasing new updates to the libraries. Whether they'll all be plants, I'm not sure. Um, but there'll be some really nice updates coming in the future for landscape designers. So let's just select all of those. You can notice that every time I click, I'm getting a different sort of group here. 
So that's one really, really good little tip. And then the other nice tip is to actually select them. Okay, and then hold shift down. And then when you drag, you're actually dragging maybe a copy of that entire group of plants. So this can be quite a rapid thing to do. Now, if you do also want to, you can right click create a container and organize all of those particular plants into that container. Let's do that. And let's rename this uh, ferns. Okay, so that means I can globally turn the whole container on and off. Okay, and as well as actually moving it around, what we can do is we can basically right click, add that to my user library. Okay, so when you click add to user library, just let it process for a second while it does it. And you'll notice that this will add this group of plants into my user library. So it's something that I can bring back in the future. Okay, so another quick thing I just wanted to talk about with regard to the Quixel assets is the new decals. Um, so if we go back to Quixel, you'll notice as well as the new 3D plants, um, we've also got some enhanced decals. Now these are really nice. There's lots and lots of different libraries here. Um, there's a huge library of these in fact. So I'm going to go to vegetation and uh, leaves. I want to scatter some leaves onto my project here. So again, the same thing applies. You can see there's lots of different um, folders of libraries here. All you need to do is click on that to start it downloading. But here's a couple of that I've downloaded already. So I'm going to select this one and drag it into the drawing. Just let it process and load in for a second. And the first time you actually load it, it always takes a bit longer. And there we can see, you know, some really nice libraries of assets, uh, those sort of leaves scattered. So I really like this. I think this is so cool. I'm going to go back into Quixel Mega Scans and Decals. I'm going to click my favourites because I've already added a few different favourites in here that I can now bring into my project. Let's load in another one. And you can see, you know, this just takes away those sort of perfect images, just gives you a little bit more kind of perfection. Um, okay, so I just want to move on to one more thing. Um, I just want to show you a couple of things here. So here I've got a really nice view. Now I do remember, of course, we can use the path tracer at any time just to render that view with a lot more realism and better lighting, reflections and so on. So what I'm going to do is basically go up to my views and I just want to remind you, like I did in my last video, how we can actually render things like site plans. So as long as we have the path tracing turned on, um, we can move around and sort of frame up our view. And when we're ready, we just click onto the path tracing button to get a really, really lovely proper site plan. Now look at that, the quality of the rendering, absolutely glorious. Um, what I'll do, I thought I'll zoom in a bit. Now I do find that when I'm working, I often want to turn this off. Now let's sort of frame up this new little area here where I was doing a bit of planting here. And let's show you that with the path tracing turned on. So you can see the quality of the lighting, the quality of the renderings and things like the shadows look absolutely fantastic. And if that's the view that you'd like to store for the client, you just need to create the image for that particular view. So very, very straightforward and easy to do. And that's all you need to do there. Okay, so you can see I've actually got a couple of saved views in the project already. Uh, this makes a particularly nice sort of rendered site plan here, which I'll render out at final quality in a bit. I've also got a section through the building and if you watch my previous videos on this, you'll notice that this is where I simply adjusted the clipping plane. Okay, so I might just want to take the more and go to lighting. And I often find for things like sections, you just want to boost up the ambient lighting quite a bit, just so you kind of get these nice uh, lighter bits within the project there. So that makes quite a big difference. Just let that render up for a second. That's really, really nice the way it refines. And it's not, not really until it denoises at the end and sort of finishes the rendering uh, that you can really sort of tell the final quality. There we go. It sort of cleans it up very nicely. So that's a really, really nice little drawing. And um, finally, I've also got things like elevations. And all I've done here is just kind of take the clipping plane and bring it a bit more in front of the building. Um, so you can kind of actually see the full building itself. So don't forget to use these uh, plan views. And if you're a Mac user, I've shown you how to achieve very similar things for things like sections as well. But really that combined with the new path tracing function, it's going to give you absolutely beautiful renderings and animations. Uh, but what we're really interested in today is the new Quixel assets. So again, when you're working, just turn that one off if I were you. 
and just sort of make sure that you explore not only the assets and the materials but actually these new ones the 3d plants and all the variations within those as well so what a fantastic asset and addition to the twin motion libraries really looking forward to using this all of my projects and i'm sure you will be too so thanks for watching everybody i really hope to see you in the next project and look forward to you subscribing thanks for watching bye bye Thank you.